We all know William Shakespeare, the most famous author of all time, writer of 37 plays, 154 sonnets, several epic poems, and why we are here today. But what if I told you Shakespeare never wrote a single word? Shakespeare is buried in the church floor. On the wall nearby is a monument to him. He wrote four poems, 154 sonnets, and 37 plays. And many believe he told us more about ambition and royal intrigue and suffering and about love and death and human nature than anyone before or since. But why did the man who told us so much about who we are tell us so little about himself? There's always been a question. This is a rare visit to Stratford for former British cabinet minister Enoch Powell, whose study of Shakespeare's plays convinced him that the town was built on a lie. At that time, I'd been a member of a cabinet and I'd been in politics for 20 years and I had some idea of what it's like in the kitchen. And my astonishment was to discover that these were the works of somebody who'd been in the kitchen. They're written by someone who has lived the life, who has been part of a life of politics and power, who knows what people feel when they are near to the center of power, near to the heat of the kitchen. Uh, it's not something which can be transferred. It's not something on which an author, just an author, can be briefed. Oh, this is how it happens. It comes straight out of experience, straight out of personal observation, straight out of personal feeling. That's the difference uh, which comes over you when you read Shakespeare detached from the Stratfordian fantasy. The birthplace is where the visitor picks up the first threads of Shakespeare's biography. But he hears few facts. There's no record, for instance, that Shakespeare was born in this house. Instead, the visitor hears what may have happened and is given a choice of possibilities. What does in fact, to these theories? The tour is so skillful, a visitor may not notice that nothing here can actually be traced to Shakespeare himself. But sadly, none of the furnishings in this room belong to the family. They have subsequently been brought into the house by the Shakespeare Trust to furnish it um, in a manner that the Shakespeare's probably would have had. It was early in the reign of Queen Elizabeth. The Lord's Prayer had only freshly been translated into Protestant English, and Stratford's Grammar School was nurturing its most famous pupil. But there is a problem. There is absolutely no documentary evidence that William Shakespeare of Stratford ever went to school at all. Amen. No plays, no poems, not a single letter in Shakespeare's own hand has ever been found. One by one, all the fine stories of Shakespeare, from the young scamp arrested for deer poaching to the lovesick youth courting Anne Hathaway, all turn out to be the inventive recollections of people who had never seen Shakespeare, who were born long after he died. examples generally accepted are six signatures, each one spelled differently. Three of the signatures are in his will, the most famous Shakespeare document of all, 
one of the most famous documents in existence, period. In it, he divides his property down to a silver bowl and a sword, but he makes no mention of any books, manuscripts, plays, poems, or any shares in a London theater. He leaves his wife just one thing, his second best bed. Written between the lines of the will is a bequeathal of some money for rings to my fellows John Hemming, Richard Burbage, and Henry Condell, who were actors. That's about it. After centuries of the most intensive literary treasure hunt of all time, these are the nuggets. The lead... Friends and colleagues during his lifetime who were able to perform this service for him after his death. Well, we have Shakespeare's will. And in his will, as it happens, he remembered Hemming and Condell. But unfortunately, and that is one of the accidents which keep happening to William Shakespeare of Stratford-on-Avon, the references to Hemming and Condell in the will are interlineations by another hand. Isn't that an unfortunate accident that the link between the actors who are the editors or purport to be the editors of this massive new material never released before have apparently been introduced into his will. That, by the way, and having mentioned Shakespeare's will, that is a will in which this great spirit, this man of, a man of immense learning and vision, not only bequeathed no books that can be perhaps explained away, but he bequeathed not even the most valuable thing which he had to bequeath, the remaining manuscripts of his plays, which, would, which were eventually to be published seven years after his death. Trouble is, there's a puzzle with which one's confronted. It doesn't run right. Nothing's wrong. Somebody fixed it. And to me, in its wording, in its aspect, in everything about it, that is a fix. It is a fix which was arranged to go with the first folio. that simple. No one even knows for sure what he looked like. This portrait hung in a place of honor in Washington's Folger Shakespeare Library until a close examination showed that it was the portrait of another man who'd been partly painted over. This portrait was owned by King William IV and was once called Shakespeare. It has now been retitled Portrait of an Unknown Man. One by one, the portraits of Shakespeare have proved to be as fanciful as the anecdotes about his life. Art experts now doubt that he posed for a single one of them. What do you make of the frontispiece, the engraving, the first picture of Shakespeare? If you have to have a face, and everybody has a face, there is a face. And that is the face of the same design, as the face of a monument, the Stratford Monument, to which this book for the first time refers. The first connection between these plays and Stratford on Avon, and how convenient that there was a Stratford Monument. The one spoof goes with the other spoof, and it's all part of the spoof of William Shakespeare. It's shocking, isn't it? It's an absolute shocker. Somebody, no doubt, took it into the workshop and said, here, this is what it's to look like. It absolutely stinks. You don't think that's the face of a man who would uh, write the sonnets? I don't think it's the face of a man at all. I think it's the face of anonymous, of somebody who isn't a man. A mask somebody invented where there has to be somebody to conceal an identity. Put up with it. Okay, 
his magic piano shop in Digbeth, Birmingham. He claims to have unique ancestral links with the great bard and some interesting new theories on his life. It's always been handed down that we, we are related to uh, William Sly, who's the real William Shakespeare. And um, I've always had a, a feeling of belonging, especially in Digbeth. I mean, if you were going to say where Shakespeare lived, whether it was Stratford, London, Birmingham, or Digbeth, Digbeth, you know, the one word that has a connection with Shakespeare is Beth, Macbeth, Digbeth. And um, we've done an exhibition on the uh, on the uh, on Shakespeare and, and my family and Birmingham, and um, it's open to the public. And um, we've had uh, quite a lot of people sign the book that they they agree with with the exhibition, which is about William Sly, who was the real William Shakespeare. Now, John, I get the impression that Shakespeare is uh, quite an important part of your life, is that right? He's, he's all my life. Now, tell me, this is the exhibition that you're setting up, isn't it? That's right. Tell me about your special connection with Shakespeare. Well, my uh, look-alike ancestor's portrait, William Sly, and William Shakespeare, <laughs> William Sly, um, may or may not be the real William Shakespeare. Why do you think he might be... Well, there's lots of reasons. That's why I've had the exhibition, because it'll explain everything, because people ask me every day my connection with Shakespeare. And with the exhibition, it's educational for children, and it's educational for everybody, really, in Birmingham. And uh, it, it, it saves a lot of talking, because it takes a lot of explaining. Yeah. William Sly lived at about the same time, didn't he, he Shakespeare? He was born, born the same, same year as Shakespeare, and um, there was a mystery as to how he died. Um, but I believe he died in this area, in Birmingham. But his portrait, yes. which looks very much like you, uncanny look-alike, yes. of William Sly, yes. is actually in Shakespeare's daughter's house, isn't it? That's, That's right. right, yes, yes. So there's yes. quite a few strong connections. Oh, there's there. a big connection there. There's actually in, in Shakespeare's daughter's house, plus the fact that uh, Christopher Sly went poaching with, with, with uh, William Shakespeare in Chalker Park. And, uh, as I say, he's... he's uh, um, Christ Christopher Sly lived at Shakespeare's auntie's house, who, who was um, Shakespeare's auntie, Auntie Sly. So how did you know about this, this story in the first place? Has this been carried down well, by your father carried, carried, and your grandfather? It's been carried on through the family, through the ages, and uh, it's, um, I'm, I, I love anything to do with Shakespeare or, or to do with acting. Oh. Shakespeare, in his early days, he was in Birmingham, apparently, and his early plays were performed at Bourneville, um, at the old barns, and there used to be an, an, an old um, sign outside for years and years, many years, Shakespeare performed his early plays here. So he was living in the air, and he actually lived at the, at the old barns in, in Bourneville, and, um, which is in, then Kings Norton. And uh, Kings Norton is, is the very old Birmingham. Kings Norton was here before Birmingham. And, um, so everybody associates yeah, yeah. Shakespeare with Stratford, don't they? But in fact, we've got a lot here to shout about. Well, right it's associated with the Midlands, really, on a whole, Warwickshire. But his early days were more associated with Birmingham, because um, he, he, he was, uh, he almost had two names, Sly mm. and Shakespeare. So he was sort of Sly in Birmingham and Shakespeare in Stratford. He had two houses, two wives, two... Uh, two faces, two this, two, two names, two everything. He had anybody uh, disagreeing had with you about well, this? Well, probably, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You had people sort of knocking on your door and saying, well, stop spreading these rumours about Shakespeare, it's not true. Well, not really, no. I mean, I, I just sort of, uh, you know, uh, research things first and uh, things seem to fit in. You know, so has, and, uh, you know, so you've got a few more years researching yet, do you think? You're going to find out lots more information? Yeah, it, 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 the more you, you get involved, Well, it's in your genes. And of course, the portrait, when I look at the portrait, and when people look at the portrait of my ancestor, William Sly, who's the real William Shakespeare, everybody say, everybody, more or less, uh, says that it's an absolute double. And when I look at it, it in your genes, it, it, you know, you know, it, you just know in your genes and everything, you, you just know that, it, it, that that is a, a portrait of you or your, or, in another life or, or uh, of your ancestor. The bone structure is the same 
uh, especially around the eyes, and the mouth is very similar, and the lips are very similar, and um, that's by experts. That's that's because uh, I'm not expert on uh, anatomy, but experts have um, come to that conclusion that uh, the bone structure is, is the same. Shakespeare's signature in in. Uh, 1612 in the records office um, reads Shakespeare's signature reads everybody agrees with me on this you know um, that it looks like Sparky but which is is rather puzzling you know um, which is which is which which gives more backing to the the signature um, and, um, and and the exhibition it gives it more interest it's an exhibition that I've put on and I enjoy. And if people believe, that's up to them, you know. I believe, and um, everybody that's been in the exhibition believes. But we'll probably get one out of thousands eventually, you know, you always do perhaps. Well, it's, uh, when, you, when you're indoctrinated and uh, you've been taught a certain uh, thing that's happened in history, which is controlled by the um, whoever's in, in, in charge of the country, because they make the history books, not the, not the ordinary people. Um, that they make sure that, that it's well uh, part of the education and, and part of the general knowledge. But when, when you come up with um, something that's different to what you've been taught, it's a little bit of a shock to the William Shakespeare and his colleagues, all his colleagues, were involved in the gunpowder plot. Therefore, therefore, <coughs> he had to write things in code. Now, to convey who he really was, he couldn't say he was Guy Fawkes or whatever, uh, he had to put a message in the Bible to who he was, or, or a, a, a book that, that people would read for generations to come. Otherwise, it would never be, be found. Uh, when he was 46 years of age, Shakespeare wrote this in the, in the James the first edition of the Holy Bible, and it's he was 46 years of age. Uh, this is Psalm 46, and if you read 46 words forward, you get the word shake, and if you go 46 years words backward, you get spear, which equals Shakespeare. Now, to, to let people know who he really was, he got Shakespeare, and then if you put the four and six together, makes ten, it makes William Sly, Birmingham. So, it was really William Shakespeare and William Sly of Birmingham. So, Shakespeare was a Brummagem man. And I thought this would be worth putting up in the exhibition because it's of international... Well, my relation is to William Sly, actually, who was the real William Shakespeare behind the mask, as we know by the portrait, and as Ben Johnson states, that the, the, the portrait is a mask. They had a meeting at Ragley Hall uh, in 17-something, uh, um, 84, something like that. Uh, a big meet at Ragley Hall about the face of Shakespeare. They was concerned, they wanted like to know what he looked like, you see. But of course they were looking for Shakespeare and not Sly. But going to the register, Shakespeare wasn't a Shakespeare, he was a Sly, because they couldn't put his, 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 his stepfather's name, they could only put William. So all the Shakespeare's were uh, registered as <coughs> Shakespeare, except William, it was just registered William, you see. So, the, so he wasn't really a Shakespeare, he was a Sly. It's, it's, it's strange, it's bewildering, it, it's, it's uncanny, you know, it really is... Uh, you know, what's it, you know, but it's great, it's nice to, to have these uh, things, but um, what's, it, what's it all mean? Is it reincarnation? Who knows? <laughs> Ask what's his name, that footballer. <laughs> Better not mention that. <laughs> no, but I'm not a Buddhist. And Hathaway was a good girl, she only had one spouse. But why is Will Sly's portrait hanging in Shakespeare's door? There are 
lots of ditties in it. Just you wait till we begin it. The Stratford Shakespeare Show, the Stratford Shakespeare Show. Here's a show that's very snappy. It is sure to make you happy. The Stratford Shakespeare Show. Do a promenade now. Sing about the bard now. This is Shakespeare's signature tune. Shakespeare's signature tune. Shakespeare's signature tune. Shakespeare is Stratford's big attraction. Tourists get lots of satisfaction. Shakespeare's signature tune. Shakespeare's signature tune. Do a promenade now. Sing about the bard now. Shakespeare's signature tune. Shakespeare's signature tune. Now, Sly is a rare old English name. Whilst looking into my family tree, I was amazed to discover that one of my ancestors was William Sly. Now, William Sly had a close relationship as fellow actor with William Shakespeare. His family tree, his family tree, John Sly is so full of his family tree. Let's sing a few verses and then we shall see why John is so full of his family tree. We know he descended from Shakespeare, that wonderful poet of yours, who worked with a guy called William Sly in 1584. Now Shakespeare liked William Sly's missus, so he hopped and gave her a call. And hereby we stay, they did punch a mate, so we sing through it all. His family tree, his family tree, John Sly is so proud of his family tree. Shakespeare's real name may have been Sly, and Sly means clever. That is why all his works he could endeavour. Sly fits Shakespeare perfectly, so very fine, making famous the bards each and every line. Since Shakespeare died, his words have known fame, but alas, twas goodly Sly who wrote the name. In years to come, as of all the years gone by, people the world over will read those words of Sly. From the famous mention Shakespeare's pen, the Slys are no rogues, the Slys came in with King Richard's men. So rest ye mind as those words of Sly live on forever and will never die. And so I decided to be an actor. Now I'm a bit of an extrovert, I love to entertain. I like to look at the audience and view them with disdain. For with the fame and fortune I am going to go to see. That's for sure to say, for sure to let the life for me. I'll give some great performances and how the world would cheer you. Oh, I want to be a feel good. I know I'm going to be real good. I'm very sure I'm sure we'll pull the range. Oh, I want to be an actor, a great Shakespearean actor. I want to be an actor on the stage. Shakespeare had a close relationship and connection with the Sly family. William Shakespeare and Christopher Sly often went fishing, hunting and even poaching in Chalkup Park near Stratford-upon-Avon. Stephen Sly was an upstanding citizen of Stratford in 1583 and often went drinking with William Shakespeare at Kit Sly's tavern. Shakespeare often visited Kit Sly at Wilmcote, the place of Shakespeare's mother. Can you imagine then, William Shakespeare and the Sly family Saturday night doing the Shakespeare Shuffle. Sure, I've got me in peace, dance about in praise. Praise 
on Shakespeare's plays Get the floor ablaze With a Shakespeare shaking shuffle William Sly was a shareholder and found a member with William Shakespeare when the Globe Theatre was formed in London. William Sly was also a principal actor in all of Shakespeare's plays. However, it must have been Haven on the Avon in those great Shakespearean days. Haven on the Avon, Haven on the Avon, what a paradise it seems. Haven on the Avon, Haven on the Avon, what a lovely place to be. Haven on the Avon, Haven on the Avon, darling you and only me. We get away from our problems, we get away from the blues. away from that terrible telling news. Haven on the Avon, Haven on the Avon, what a lovely place to be. Haven on the Avon, Haven on the Avon, in our little boat of dreams. We've all read about William Shakespeare's liking for the maidens of the day and about Shakespeare's shotgun wedding to Anne Hathaway. I wonder if on honeymoon at Clopton House, Stratford, William Shakespeare serenaded Anne Hathaway not only with his poems, but with a ballad or two. Anne Hathaway's cottage is such a lovely place. As elegant and grey When Yanks come to Stratford Or bubbling with glee They get so excited And gosh and oh gee And what's the first place That they all go to see Anne Hathaway's cottage Anne Hathaway's cottage Is such a lovely place Anne Hathaway's cottage as elegant and grace Shakespeare in London which gave him the pip So homeward to Stratford quite often he'd nip I'll give you three guesses where he had his kip Anne Hathaway's cottage What a wonderful place it is Anne Hathaway's cottage We all know that William Shakespeare and Anne Hathaway had a daughter called Susanna who married John Hall, a doctor, and they lived at Hall's Croft, Stratford. But now there is a mystery. Why? Is my ancestor William Sly? Yes, why is William Sly's portrait hanging in Shakespeare's daughter's house? The William Sly portrait is a real mystery. You would think that William Shakespeare's daughter, Susanna, would have a portrait of her own father. But no, there is a portrait of my forefather, William Sly, hanging in Shakespeare's daughter's house. Perhaps William Sly is really William Shakespeare. Some months ago I read a book about a guy named Sly whose wife had fun with Shakespeare in the Stratford days gone by. 
My real surname is Fly and think of Shakespeare with affection. Perhaps between the bard and me there must be some connection. It must be great to be related to Shakespeare, be associated with the bard. You may think I'm a Stratford fella, needy Tom, needy Tom, contemplate. But one day I might prove that I'm a real Shakespeare descendant. There's this funny feeling inside me, a feeling I find so hard to resolve. It must be great to be related to Shakespeare, to be associated with the bard. Yes, it must be great to be related to William Shakespeare the greatest writer the world has ever known. Now my next song is not to be confused with Starskin Hutch, as it's called Sparky the Touch. The pianist William Shakespeare might have liked so much. I've fought and so pianos for years and years, played lots of tunes upon them, enchanted many ears, they call me Sparky the Touch. The pianist William Shakespeare would have loved so much. The bard is my ancestor, I want you to call me Sparky the Touch. Pianist William Shakespeare would have loved so much. If William Shakespeare and William Sly were here today, I wonder if they would have liked to have heard me played my next song, Shakespeare and the Sly Connection. There's a book coming out, there's a book coming out, and it's not about detection. There's a book coming out, there's a book coming out, and it's called the Sly Connection. You'll find it quite exciting, so a copy you must buy. It points out the connection of Will Shakespeare to John Sly. Yeah. Read about the Sly Connection Read about the Sly Connection Read about Shakespeare Read about Sly Read about the things they did in days gone by Shakespeare visited with Sly Shakespeare was a little bit Sly Thank you for listening to my musical story about William Shakespeare and the Sly Connection. Isn't it a sweet refrain? Shall we play it once again? Play it again. Cares away, please buy one and learn.